G'day folks, welcome to another episode of Learn to Paint TV. Rod Moore here with you again from Moore Art School and Learn to Paint Academy. Now I'm excited about this week's episode. We're going to do something a little bit different. One of the areas that I've been exploring in my own painting is getting more sort of abstract in my landscape and seascape paintings. And so I want to explore uh, a subject with you today that has a little bit more abstraction in it than what we might normally do. So recently I was up camping and four-wheel driving up on the beaches north of Noosa here in a beautiful area, Double Island Point um, and uh, Coloured Sands near Rainbow Beach. And I was up there with my mate Cole and this is one of the paintings that I did on location at Coloured Sands. And there's a lot of palette knife work in there and you know it's fairly abstract in nature compared to what we normally do. And I, I like that style and that's sort of the direction that I'm going in. I thought we might do a version of this painting today um, just to show you some of the techniques of the palette knife and getting a little bit more abstract. So we'll probably do that section there in our painting here today. Okay, so we're gonna get started as we always do with step one of the more method. We're gonna use a uh, fan brush this time. I've just got my ultramarine blue, my alizarin crimson up on the palette there. And I've got a, what looks like a 16 by 20 uh, stretch canvas and we're going to be a little bit looser than what we normally are so I'll just get a little bit of water we'll get some of that paint there and uh, what we want to do is these, these cliffs we're going to run them down that way so they're going to be higher up here and then the beach is going to come in sort of round about there with that water okay so then we're going to have sand through there and uh, the water running back that way Pretty simple sort of start, right? Um, and really, for the purpose of this painting, we can pretty much stop right there um, as far as a drawing goes. However, what I'll do is map out a few things for you. So um, we wanna have sort of foliage that comes down to the sand like so. And we wanna do that in a few spots, but we don't wanna repeat that shape. So that's important, right? Don't, don't have repeating shapes too much. And then in the rest of it, we'll have our sands and so on. Um, different coloured sands and then we'll have a little bit of wave action just on the foreshore there the water was fairly uh, turquoise so we'll try and capture that but uh, you know to be honest I think that's pretty much all I would do as far as a drawing goes purely because of the nature that we want to try and get looser and more abstract with this so I'll pop this in the water so for this block in I'm just going to use an old crusty brush. I want to block in some darks and things in here and um, some earthy tones and I'm going to do it fairly randomly. Okay, uh, I'm not going to do it too methodical like trying to colour in and around these lines as we might do in some of our other demonstrations. So let me start off by getting in more of an earthy tone. Okay sort of an orange, so I'm using yellow ochre and the alizarin crimson, I'll get a little touch of the blue in there, okay. Now notice I'm not mixing that colour up completely there, I'm leaving it fairly broken colour and I'm just going to vary those brush marks around, okay, a bit of crusty paint there, because the whole key of this painting to make it work is getting some nice broken colours and some different colour shifts um, in there. So I'll get some more saturated paint in here. And remember this is just blocking in. So we'll be adding layers over here. But you want this to be a little bit on the dark side. This is sort of our shadow um, tone that we're putting in here now, yeah? So don't go too light with this. Which is part of the reason why I put that blue in. There was just to darken it off a bit. Okay. Run that up to there. And now I'm just scrubbing this in. I'm not uh, using any particular technique. I'm using a really old crusty brush, right? Um, it's been used a million times. You can see it's, it's done its fair share of painting this brush. Um, and I'm just scrubbing that paint in, right? I'm just varying up the tones, getting a bit of shift in that color and tone in there. Okay, so I'll get it to about there. 
And then what I'll do is I'll go, let's get in that foliage tone. Right? So we'll go a bit darker here. A little bit of that red in there. And there's going to be foliage. It's not quite the tone I'd like. Um, there's going to be foliage along the tops here of these sand dunes. And some of that foliage works its way down the side there. With acrylics, you know, you'll, you'll struggle with acrylics if you don't use enough paint because then you can't push the paint around. If you're only using a thin little amount of paint, then what will happen is it'll just soak straight into the canvas and then you have no um, potential to manipulate the paint and move the paint around. And I find so many beginners struggle with that very thing simply because they're just not using enough paint in there. Now, we've got a big area in the sky here. It was a beautiful blue sky day, but I want to get some reds and yellows into the mix in here. In order to be able to do that, we're going to need, again, a lot of paint. If you put only a little bit of paint up and then try and do this next step with the sky, you will struggle because by the time you put the paint here and then move over here, it's going to be dry back where you started. So notice I've got quite a bit of blue up there. I'll start with my blue and my white. Half inch, this is about an inch wide. It's bristle hairbrush. I've used it a million times, so it's all clammed up with paint. So I'll just try and loosen it a bit there. And I'll take all that white and we'll take a big chunk of that blue. Now that is like I put them side by side and then I can just work them together, okay? Now that tone as it is, is a bit vibrant. So I'll just take just a little, just a little scrape of the, that gray dark. And we'll just put that in just to pull it back a bit, right? Now it will dry a little bit darker than what it's going to go on. Um, so keep that in mind. Okay. So I'm just gonna scrub that around. I know that some of you right now are probably horrified <laughs> watching me paint. Um, that you know you, you're far more particular and precise with your painting. That's perfectly fine. Sometimes it helps to loosen up though. Um, and I often think it's a personality thing. Um, whether you're a loose painter or a rigid type painter can uh, sometimes tell us a lot about the way we do other things and approach other things in life as well. That's just a personal theory. I don't know if there's any truth to that, but got a nice little tree happening on top there. Happy accident, you know, I didn't set out to paint a tree there at all. Even though we know it's going to be foliage in there. Um, it just happened, so I'll leave it and we'll work with it. Okay, and move that white around a bit more. Now you just have to remember that there's no one right way of approaching painting. <laughs> um, there's many ways to get a finished result. Okay. And if anyone tries to tell you you're not doing it the right way, tell them who said. <laughs> who said that's not the right way? All right, so I've got a bit of alizarin crimson or permanent crimson with the artillery range in there. And I'll get a little bit of that blue and we'll just work some of that in. Because look, it was a really warm day. I was standing on the beach and um, there's this rising sort of heat up in the sky. Even though it looks to the untrained eye as just being a solid blue sky, in reality, there's temperature in there, isn't there? There's rising heat off these cliffs. And um, if you can indicate a little bit of that, just subtly, like this is not going to stand out and dominate the painting, but it's there. And I said we're going to use some palette knives. So I've got a few different types. And what I recommend is that you experiment with palette knives. So this is a, a Liquitex, quite a large one. Okay, I wouldn't use this on anything smaller than this size. Um, but this is quite a good one for getting a lot of painting quickly. And I've got little uh, squared off ones, the little typical sort of palette knife. Now don't do what I do. You can see I've let the paint dry on there. 
that's not a good thing. That, that makes it difficult to work with. So make sure whenever you use your palette knives that you clean them off, right? Um, with my bigger ones, I'll definitely do that. Now this one's a paint scraper, okay? This is what you get from the hardware store, but it's great for laying in large chunky amounts of paint and getting lots of texture in there. And this one's a little uh, Bob Ross, Bill Alexander style palette knife, which can be good for getting little, you know, little edges and things like that. We'll get some yellow ochre. Okay, we'll mix that up. Now, one of the things I like about the palette knife is you can get this nice broken color in there. Don't over mix the paint, right? And then I'll come in and just like I do with a small palette knife, I'll just scrape it through so I get paint on the edge there. And um, we'll just get this sand here through. Now this beach here is on low tide. Um, you get lots of four wheel drives going along there. So these cliffs are huge, you know, like you have to imagine these are huge bulbous cliffs, a little four wheel drive going along the bottom there, up to Rainbow Beach, okay. Um, so try and understand the perspective that we're working with here. Um, so you can see you can get a lot of paint on here quite quickly with the bigger palette knife. move that around, I get a little bit more yellow ochre in there as it comes closer to me in the sand. I want to just darken it up a bit. Now because there's a lot of four-wheel drives that go through this area, and you can really only get onto these beaches in a four-wheel drive, um, a lot of the sand is sort of got lots of rivets and you know, track marks and things in there. So it's not a nice smooth beach is what I'm saying. Um, maybe a little bit light, I don't know. Get a little bit more of that yellow ochre in there. Let's just try and darken it up as we get in here. Now, you see I'm using just a really fairly random sort of marks there. But I like the way the yellow and the blue work together and you've got this nice big dark body of it through there. Okay. Grab another big flat brush. Okay. So we're going to take, we need that blue, a little bit left there. We need that white and get some of that yellow happening. Get a little bit of yellow ochre. Okay. And that's kind of the effect. I think in my original painting, I went just a touch too dark, possibly. Um, but again, I want broken color in there. I don't want it all to be just one blocky tone. And I have to thank my Matt Cole Nation, who's a pretty handy painter himself. Um, he started playing around with the palette knife while we are up there as well as the same as I did. And I think we both enjoyed it. Um, but I have to thank him for um, showing me the four wheel drive, how to get up there. Um, we had a great couple of days painting up on the beaches up there. So we've achieved step two of the mole method with locked in uh, all of our main shapes, right? So in this painting, we've got basically one, two, three, four big shapes. So if you simplify it down to four big shapes and then block it in with broken color and some random effects, earthy tones, foliage tones, but you know, on the dark side through here, and then I've got my lights in here, here, and here, okay? Creates a nice balance. Um, it's pretty simple painting when you look at it like that. Anyone can do this, right? And you can see I didn't use any special technique with my brush. Um, I just knew where I need to put the, the right values and tones in the right shapes. Um, but you know, if you'll have a close up look at the palette knife marks and the brush marks, they're very, very random. They're very broken. They're very loose. And uh, it would appear there's not a lot of control. Um, however, there's an, a basic fundamental understanding of the painting principles 
that sat behind everything that I did. And um, if you keep those in mind, then you, uh, if you learn those fundamentals, which is what we teach at the Learn to Paint Academy, and then with lots of practice of those fundamentals, you get to a point where you don't have to think about them anymore. You do them unconsciously, which then allows you to free up and loosen up and, be, and express yourself more artistically rather than methodically and mechanically. Okay, welcome back, folks. We're now going to do step three in the more method of painting, which is to now put in our details, our highlights, finishing touches. This has dried off quite nicely. There's still a few little wet patches here and there, but that's okay. We'll work around those. And uh, it's got a nice feel to it, nice high key feel despite our darks in here. I think it's working quite well, so I'm pretty excited about the way this one's progressing. Um, I've just refreshed the paint, so I've got ultramarine blue, permanent crimson, a cadmium red, yellow ochre, and a cadmium yellow. So the only two additional colours are the two cadmiums in there to add a bit more punch and impact, and of course our titanium white. So this is where we uh, can start to have a bit of fun. I'm going to you know, play around with a couple of different of these palette knives. I'll start off with this nice Liquitex one. And we'll just get in a little bit of uh, highlight on some of this foliage as a starting point. Um, so let's just get a little bit of that blue there. We'll take some of this yellow ochre. Have to be careful not to get too much of that other blue in there. Uh, a little bit of the cad yellow. And we'll just mix those together. I just want a, a brighter green. Now, again, don't over mix it. I think having that uh, broken colour in there is quite a... A nice effect and what I'll do is I'll just work along the tops where a bit of sunlight might be uh, catching up there. Don't lose all your darks though. So I'm always telling my students, um, you know, I've got that, we put in that darker foliage in there earlier for a reason. So you want to try and preserve um, the darks as well as adding in these highlights. Okay. Get some nice effects just by dragging the, uh, the knife around. And look, I'm really just experimenting here at the moment. Um, I certainly haven't mastered the palette knife myself yet. And uh, there's only one way to learn how to use, use it. I'm a great believer in experimenting all the time and trying new things so okay so i've got a bit of yellow ochre, a bit of the cadmium red and a bit of the uh cad yellow in there and i'll get a swipe of the white okay and again don't over uh don't over mix this paint because the beauty of this is getting a bit of a broken color effect. Now this is the colored sands near Rainbow Beach. And it is, when you look at it, it's all these beautiful different colors and textures and tones in a sand dune. And that's quite unique um, with the different colors that you get. So I'm just gonna take a cut there and you can have a look and see there's broken color in there. Whatever's on there is what's gonna end up on here, right? So what I'm gonna do is just that in and those lovely different textures and colors are showing through there now right so a couple of highlight tones that darker tone we originally painted is coming through which is what we wanted and it's the reason why we put that darker tone there anyway right add a bit of yellow ochre in there let's just see what we've got up here beautiful So I'm just going to build it up and just vary the angle of the, the knife as we go. Okay. And look, if we overdo it in parts, we can paint some dark back in there. So um, don't be afraid to experiment. I'm just going to go for a, an initial sort of pass with this and then we'll reassess it and add back in what we need. There's just a couple of hard lines in there, so I'll just break up those lines of a little bit of extra colour, okay? I'll 
can actually scrape off a bit of the paint as well to create some interesting effects. When you scrap that paint back, that under paint that's already dried in there now will start to poke through. <coughs> a little bit of alizarin, yellow ochre. And again, you know, I'm really just experimenting here. I don't really have a set plan for this. Um, and or a predetermined outcome. I, I mean, I know I want it to look and resemble the coloured sands, however, I want to do it in an abstract kind of way. As I head in that direction, I want to just grey it back a bit. So I'll add in some blue, a bit more white. Because I want my focal point to be sort of in here. So I'll add in some more muted sort of tones. Feel like I've lost some of my darks in here a little bit. Actually, that palette knife is bent. No point having a bent one, so I'll take a different knife. There we go. I'll just work some of that dark back. It's actually a little bit darker than what the original darks were painted in. Just wanted to get that abstracty sort of feel into this, but still represent the um, subject that we're painting, which is of course the coloured sands. So you can see where I've, I've gone. I've worked that dark back in there, there and there. But what I need to do is just stop it being blocky. Just get a little bit of the light back over it. And this is going to end up a lovely textured painting because I'm working lots of different layers of paint over it. It's white, so notice I'm pulling the white out like that, and then I'm going to just cut through. So I've got a bead of the white on the end there, and then I'm going to come in here and go, okay. I don't want to overdo the white in here, but in just a few spots here and there. I'm just going to take some of this darker red here, and I'm, I just want to just felt like the eye was running out of that corner. I don't know whether that was a wise thing to do in there or not. Um, but I just wanted to sort of get a dark happening in there. You know, in terms of showing you the basic idea of getting a real abstract feel into a seascape. I mean, this is a great, this is a great subject to do that, of course, because of the abstract nature of the coloured sands anyway, um, but we've managed to get a 101 different broken colours in there. We've still captured the essence of the scene. It's got the feel of being there on a bright sunny day and um, I'm pretty happy with that as a, as a finished demonstration.
have a go at this one. It's a bit of fun. If nothing else, it's a bit of fun and it'll free you up from you know being too rigid and too confined in your painting. And it's another approach. And that's what we're all about here in Learn to Paint TV is exploring different approaches to help beginners like you and I learn how to paint better. And most importantly, enjoy it and have fun. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Love to see your version of it when, when you have a go at it. So send it through to us. Um, make sure you check out all the episodes of Learn to Paint TV. I'll put the web address underneath me here. It's www.learntopaint.tv. You can see all the episodes there. And also make sure you register for the free course at learntopaint.academy. So www.learntopaint.academy. Um, check that out, the free course. I know you'll enjoy that if you've enjoyed this episode. And uh, thanks very much for joining me and I'll see you next week on Learn to Paint TV. Happy painting.